While our nation has undoubtedly made progress, entrenched structural racism continues to corrupt American democracy, causing many of us to wonder if we've taken 50 steps back. Depending on where one lives in America, the way you vote could change significantly ahead of the 2022 midterm elections. I'm being joined by Wisconsin State Senator Lena Taylor, who represents the 4th Senate District, and Wisconsin State Representative Lakeisha Myers, who represents Assembly District 12. How are you? Doing well. Wonderful. I thank, thank you so you much both. for having us. Yes, thank you for being here. And after a historic turnout and increased mail voting in 2020, state lawmakers across the country, they're actually pulling in opposite directions by introducing restrictive and expansive voting legislation. So if you would, please bring us up to date. Well, if I could uh, start, I will say that in Wisconsin, uh, most recently we not only had legislation passed to kind of move in those same directions, but we also had it vetoed by Governor Evers. And there were even pastors that and others, community members that did a press conference stating that they support the action of Governor Evers. Uh, these are all efforts that in turn end up affecting uh, the elderly, seniors, um, uh, in high uh, seniors, uh, seniors meaning elderly, uh, also individuals in college, those individuals who are low income, the brown and black communities tend to be affected the most. And these efforts really take us back to some of the historical uh, things that have been voter suppression efforts across the nation. Mm -hmm. Representative Myers, did you want to add to that? Absolutely. I just think that um, we know uh, in, in history, recent history has taught us that when more people participate in the electoral process, um, we know that Democrats usually win. That was evident when we had uh, the gubernatorial, the last gubernatorial election into the presidential election. Turnout was key. So this is a part of trying to restrict who has access to the ballot box. I think when you look at uh, efforts that are underway uh, in Georgia, where it would become illegal to give a person a bottle of water that is standing in line to wait to vote. Um, things like uh, not having motor voter, uh, which is automatic voter registration with your driver's license or automatically making persons eligible to vote. And then you having to opt out of voting, uh, as is mm -hmm. the case in some places and what legislation we're looking at. Um, Mail-in ballots that were utilized uh, by many, especially during the pandemic. We know we have a robust absentee ballot voting population uh, throughout the pandemic here in uh, Wisconsin. These are some of the very things that are being looked at to be kind of wiped away. And these are things that would help people that are disabled, that would uh, help people vote who are disabled, individuals who are elderly. And then the, the big lie. I mean, we can't ignore it. When you look at what has happened with the so-called forensic audit that is supposed to be happening with the Committee on Campaigns and Elections, here in Wisconsin, individuals wanting an Arizona style uh, forensic audit, meaning that you would have to take uh, possession of voting machines at every ballot uh, that was cast and having that, you know, matched and, you know, gone through some particular process to, to verify. We already have a verification process with the Wisconsin Elections Commission, so there's no need for us to do that. But these are some of the things that are costly that will cost taxpayers more money. Um, we know that, that, you know, we're already spending money that we don't have on, you know, trying to rectify what is considered a fraudulent process, which it really wasn't. So I think that that is what is, you know, m most hurtful in our state right now. And so in the words of the late great Congressman John Lewis of Georgia, you two ladies have been getting in some good trouble. You recently traveled to the nation's capital, not only to fight for voting rights, but also to support Texas Democrats to uh, deny the Texas legislature a vote on voter suppression bill. So if you could tell us about that trip and why it was so very important. It was very important for both Senator Taylor and I, uh, and we were joined by Representative uh, uh, David Bowen and uh, one of our election commissioners, Patricia Ruiz Cantu, as well as uh, Representative Christine Sinicki as part of the representatives from Wisconsin to go to this event and deal with the For the People Act, which would encompass a lot of the voting rights uh, 
issues that are happening across the country. Texas is in a unique position because they decided to have their minority caucus leave the chamber in order to stave off, um, you know, passage of this particular legislation. Right. Uh, this Texas legislature would not be able to have a quorum in order for them to pass the legislation. So they chose to leave similar to what uh, Senator Taylor and 13 others did 10 years ago, 11 years mm -hmm. ago in 2010 to uh, try to keep off uh, uh, Act 10. So with them going to Washington, this was reminiscent, number one, of that era uh, and having someone who was actually there and be able to do that. The other part of that was it showed exactly how important voting is. Um, you know, nobody tries to restrict something when it doesn't mean anything. And I think you understand just how important the vote is, how important it is to keep some people out of voting so that they don't have that adequate representation. Also making sure that you have a standard across the board for all states um, to make sure that, of how we implement elections. Elections are most definitely under the constitution left up to the states um, to implement. So that's why rules are different in Wisconsin. We can register to vote on the same day as an of an election, whereas you can't do that in a state like Mississippi. So we want to make sure that the For the People Act is what we were there to advocate for along with the John Lewis Voting Rights Act to make sure that you have standardized voter protections in place so that you do not revert back to what happened prior to 1964, or excuse me, 1965 with the Voting Rights Act of having individuals be uh, oppressed at the, at the ballot box. If they were allowed to, uh, this is basically Jim Crow 2.0 that we're trying to stave off. That's why we were in DC. That's why it was important. That's why we were there to advocate with our uh, colleagues from Texas to make sure that we actually have the opportunity um, at the federal level, uh, having the White House, having you know the majority in the um, in Congress, in, in the House of Representatives, and having uh, the near majority in the um, in, in the Senate to make sure that you actually get rid of the filibuster and actually pass the Voting Rights Act, actually pass um, substantive voting legislation. All right, Senator yes. Taylor. Yes, that's exactly why we went. Um, you know, I have to say immediately when I saw that the Texas legislators left, I sent out um, things on social media, sent words to them to give them encouragement. They truly were and are warriors for voting rights. They are standing up um, against, as uh, Representative Myers has said, Jim Crow 2.0 um, against voting rights. It, it's something to consider the fact that they've not only left, that they've left for a significant period of time. I think it's been three weeks already. And they're doing it to say at the federal level, we need your action because the states are not necessarily doing what is right for the people. And we need some continuity. We need some consistency. We need what the gutting of the Voter Rights Act has allowed, which is for there to be a patchwork of what can happen for voters across the nation. The, the, the My People's Act, the People's Act um, allows for some changes in voting rights so that there could be consistency. And one of the things that I will say that I think is important is whether people agree or disagree with the filibuster going away permanently, it could also be used in a way in order to be able to move things around for a moment in order to be able to get voting rights issues dealt with right now. But what I would also like to end with is this is something that the president at the executive level can stand up and fight for. He said that he would do whatever he could to fight for voting rights. And we need him to do that in this particular situation so that what we can do is make sure that there is consistency across the nation. Yes, thank you both for joining us. August 6th marked the 56th anniversary of the 1965 Voting Rights Act, and 18 states have enacted 30 new laws, making it harder to vote. So needless to say, the right to vote is foundational in our democracy and must be protected. We thank you for the work that you've done and continue to do, and thank you for joining us. Wisconsin State Senator Lena Taylor represents the 4th Senate District and Wisconsin State Representative Lakeisha Myers represents Assembly District 12. Thank you. Thank you.